Hey, with the deal, man, it's yours truly, Stewie, aka Jadis Flies, guy on the radio. Man, look, I'm doing something special with Hennessy and Hot 1079, right? I'm taking it back to my rap CD days. I'm talking about when we had the big interviews, talking that big, big money, cash money. Yeah, it's going down, man. Today we got the Reds of Shine. We have one of the hottest venues in Atlanta. It's called Oak Atlanta, all right? It's all about Hennessy and Hot 1079, man. Never stop, never settle. It's Hennessy, Big Stewie, Trap House, booming. You dig? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what the deal, man? It's yours truly, Stewie, aka J Nick's Flies, got on the radio. So it's about Hennessy right now, man. ATL Unplugged, man. This is my first guest, you know what I'm saying, of, uh, of this season's show. Mr. Derez and Shine checking in. What's up, my brother? What's happening? What's happening? Now tell me what's going on with you, man. Derez and Shine. Who is Derez and Shine? Derez and Shine. It's the red the sun. I cut it. <laughs> okay, I so, so put it in. Okay, so tell me this. Like, okay, so we know we always talk. We good friends. So we always yeah, talk about sure. um everybody will see the glitz and glamour when mm -hmm. it happens. When you when you now you that you who you are now. Right, right. Tell me about your past, man. Where you come from? It was the exact opposite of glitz and glamour. Yeah, okay, you talking about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, really came from the bottom, really came from the mud, really had to figure it out, really had to struggle, really had to find a way to even continue. You know what I'm saying? Find the power, find the strength, like the real deal, people's champ, you know what I'm saying? The story. Mm. So so what part of town you uh, hail from? South side. South side. So yeah. what was it like growing up on the south side? It's kind of dangerous over there. Yeah, it's dangerous, you know what I'm saying? But it's typical. Like, growing up in it, it's like regular, but you know, coming from somewhere else going there, that ain't where you want to be. You don't want to raise your kids there. You don't even want to go through there. Like, it's nothing. It's just a dead place. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what was the struggles coming up as, as, as a youth? You know what I'm saying? Because you done had a couple names before. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people used to call you Debo. <laughs> Debo, you know yeah. Saying? I think I still call you Debo sometimes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Where that name if you come know from? me, you know me. Yeah, if you know me. <laughs> Where that me, name come from? It's Clay County. <laughs> <laughs> Southside. And I ain't even named myself that. People, my, The people named me that. Like, so was you fighting a lot when you were younger or what? I mean, uh, it, whatever you can associate with Debo. Big, aggressive. Uh, fighting. I wasn't no bully or nothing like right. that, but you know what I'm saying? I guess I fit the name, you know what I'm saying? So what was the anger coming from, like the environment? Um, you, Yeah, the environment, personal issues, mental issues, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, trying to figure me out, hmm. and a lot of anger was involved. It was the outburst of not understanding me. So what, what happened? Like, At what point in your life, pivot in your lifetime period, that you say, like, you know what, I need to get me together. I need to focus on what I got going on. Like, was he just getting older or going through certain things? I mean, I know, um, rest in peace, Dunk, you know what I'm saying? That had a big, sure. big, uh, a big deal and a big, he was a big part of your life, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And the changing point. Is that one of the changing points of you saying, I got to get myself together or what? Yeah, that was like the first stage of one of my changing points. Yeah, and then just recently talking to um, Manny, like, he just said something to me that really stuck in my mind, like, I got to step in the cocoon and come out, walk mm -hmm. away from the darkness and walk to the light. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So that's really been my focus. And if I want to be a certain type of person, I have to become that certain type of person and let go to old me. So mm. that's what that's that's what got me going now, like the motivation of changing now. Right. So tell me this. Um, being up on there and, and being with Brick Squad and walking and seeing Gucci and them go, yeah. I, what was that experience like? Because you had opportunities that most don't. You know what I mean? Right, most, right, right. You got to see the mistakes that Walker made, mistakes Gucci, Gucci made. You know yeah. Saying? How was that? It, it, it was good, but like I said, I, I didn't take it right. I didn't, mm -hmm. at the time, I didn't see it right. I was like, okay, I see the mistakes they did. I'm going to do the opposite, but I didn't do it right. Like, you know how, you, you well, with me anyway, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be the one that's never going to leave the hood. And not saying they did, but right. me. I'm going to be the one that never leave the hood. I'm going to have 100 people with me. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Everybody on the road. But that was wrong. That was the wrong way to do it because it's a business. I'm handling business. So that part I didn't pay attention to. You feel me? Um, the the risk that it that it can cost me of my career and my choices about hanging with 100, you know what I mean, from the control. South. Yeah, yeah. I can't control everybody while doing the interview or rapping or on stage. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I went the opposite way, but I learned from it myself. I like, like I had to go through it for me to understand, you know what I'm saying, the next steps. So now I'm just, I'm cool. We on the road, it's business. Right. Everybody on the bus got a job. We, yeah, we, yeah. So, so let me tell me this. How does how Atlanta, like Atlanta influence you? Because, like, you know, a lot of people hear, like, you hear the baby stories. You hear every rapper on every side of Atlanta got a different story. Right. How they came up. Right. But, Joe, I think you've been one of the first artists that came out of here that's been really been on the pain. 
Right. Like you almost damn near make a person cry listening to some of your music. It's That's like, the goal every time. I want them to cry. What I'm saying, I've been your friend for a long time, and when I listen to some of your music, I'd be like, bro, you went through that? Why you ain't yeah. calling me? I you you, you, want, you want me to tell you why, honestly? Why? Because, for example, when you're around certain people, like, you know what I'm saying, the individuals I was with, I can't show no weakness. I can't, right. how can I come and be like, yeah, bro, you know what I'm saying, I did this, I've been doing that, bro, I can't figure this out. And then, you know, they laughing. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Because I was Debo. Right. Like, we don't see you looking like that, Debo. That ain't that. But I held it in, and then, you know, music was the gateway to let it out. So let me ask you a question with that, because you just tapped on something. Being a black man growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, being a black man growing up in America, I think that's one of the things that we always deal with. We can't communicate with each other. We can't tell we you. Can't. can't. tell you, bro, I love you. You, you can't. You got to be tough all the time. You got to be. That's I mean, crazy. It, I, I tell my people I love them, You know what I'm saying? Facts. But it's crazy that in society, yeah, that make you look weak. It make you look soft in mm -hmm. a sense. Like, if I tell you, I love you, bro. Right. And I mean that, you right. know what I'm saying, nice. as a brother. But outside, like, what? What they on? Right. Especially in the lunch. Right. Oh, you already? Right. Man, it's real genuine love. It's family. But, yeah, in America, it, it's hard the way they make a man see himself, especially right. a black man. Like, right. And you know we always talk. Do you think do you think mental health is something that we need to do, deal with as far as with black men in our community? Yes. Mm. I I'm pretty sure every black man in this world deal with some type of form of mental health. Mm. Whether it be something that was inherited from their ancestors or something that they going through every day that they don't get the chance to speak about or they bottle it up and hold it in. We drink, we smoke, we chew drugs, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's some form of mental health for every black man, because we wasn't given no silver spoon, ever. Right. I don't care if you was the richest black man and had a son. Still got the same struggle. Because guess what? Pops got to teach you how to be tough, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, that's deep. Yeah, we definitely need to touch bases more on mental health. So tell me this, growing up, what type of hip-hop did you listen to? Albums. Who was the artist you was rocking with? Everything, anything possible. Tupac, Biggie. Jay Z, Nas, DMS, West Coast Connection. Mm, West Coast, right? You feel me? Uh, <laughs> Twister, whatever. Too like short Mac Ten. Yeah, Chevy all Seal. that. Yeah, everybody, whoever had an album, Master P, Cash Money, Bird, uh, Wayne, BG, BG was my favorite from the Hot Boys. Wow. Like, Juvie, like whoever. Silk the Shocker was my favorite from over there. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, whatever music. So growing up in the South, like, what was the influence of New York music? Because I think sometimes, like, New York don't really possibly understand the Southern southern thing. We we ride different. We ride rims. So yeah. I think we always had a different connection with the West Coast. Right. Because they rode rims. What, what you, what you, how, how do you feel about the connection with as far as New York? What New York rappers did you listen to? New York rappers, I listened to uh, DMX, Nas, Jay-Z, Biggie, um, Prodigy, Ma D. Okay. Like, I listened to everything. Okay. Like, everything. And I put that with my music. Well, not saying I took it from that, but that made me want to have bars for real. Right. You know, coming from Atlanta, you just, uh, well, not now. Nowadays, they got their shit together. Yeah, they got their together. You know what I'm saying? My shorty going crazy, little yeah. baby going crazy. Yeah, baby going yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it was a lot of mumbo rap. But, yeah, nah, that's why I put my mind makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So, from listening to that, not, that top music. Right. So your music now, like, who do you actually make your music for? Because you gave us pain. You know what I'm saying? Um, you got a new project that's out right now. Who do you actually make your music for and why? It started off for me, you know what I'm saying, just getting it off my chest. And now, I guess, you know what I'm saying, with the platform I got, I'm doing it for the people who need, who who don't got nobody to talk to or listen to, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's, I'm just doing it still for me and them. Like, we need help out here, like, literally. So I'm just, whoever needs something, it's so, I got something for everybody. Okay, so tell me about Hardaway. That's the one song that I know you've been doing music for a long time, but that mm -hmm. song somewhat touched people. And it was a different time. I think that time when Hardaway came out, it was the slowest song in the club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody always said you got to match the tempo with the DJs. But, yeah. But you, they match the tempo with Debo put out. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, right. The put out. So tell me about the Banger Hardaway. Um, it's When we first recorded it, right, we knew it was was fine. Like, mm -hmm. we were like, oh, yeah, this, this, this song hard. But... You know, me never knowing what a hit was, like, I ain't never witnessed, you know what I mean, that part of the, I just you know, do the music. Right. So, the impact was so crazy, I couldn't believe it. Like, people really rocking with my pain. Like, mm. these, this is my problem, like, right. <laughs> you feel me? And they rocking with it. The right. whole club going crazy. It ain't a fast tempo song, it slowed down. You know what I'm saying? London went crazy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
that song right there, I feel like opened up the doors to just making music with whatever right. rock can be played in the club. If you like the song, it can be played in the club. Okay, okay. Well, let's go to Hardaway real quick. You know what I'm saying? Go to this bank of this one. You know what the Reds are trying from. New project out right now. What project out right now? Pain 3, No More Pain. pain. Three. I have to make sure because the man be dropping records all the time. So yeah. See, you hear me? So it's going down, man. Here's Hardaway. Keep listening. Keep watching. You dig? The Red is sharp. Yeah. I got drinks on living lips. In the kitchen with magic. I got drinks on living lips. In the kitchen with magic. We got London on the track. I ain't asked now, nigga, for nothing. I took the heart away. So they put me over, coming with the dope. They took my heart away. Heart away. Heart away. Heart away. Jump in it hard away. Jump in it hard away. In the skillet with the magic. Bad bitches, bad habits. That the money got a habit. I used to dream of living lavish, yeah. now a nigga living lavish yeah. Buy a phone with the see what's fast. Yeah. If I ain't eating, then I'm fasting, yeah Fat as fuck, bottle of coupe, jerk to see if I can fit in, yeah. It didn't work, so I gave it to one of my bitches I should have took out a bit, yeah what I did I Woke up the next day, went by the bit, me and my kid yeah. I took the heart away, didn't know how to sell crack I was giving that heart away, so fucked up I had to borrow a play That shit took my heart away, but I been through hard today Fuck that, I was just in New York in the home Looking for trouble to get respect I ain't asked now nigga for nothing, I took the heart away 12 put me over, coming with the dope, they took my heart away Pouring liquor for my nigga that gone, thug holiday Don't pin it hard away, hard away I ain't asked now nigga for nothing, I took the heart away all right, there it is. That was Hardaway right there. You know what I'm saying? Hennessy and Harda, Har Hardaway. You know what I'm saying? It's going yeah. down. It's real official, man. Derez and Sean checking in, man. What would be your dream collaboration as far as producer and rapper, if you can make the best song? Artist and producer. Derez single. What, who going to produce it? Who going to feature? London on the track and Chris Brown. Okay. I don't even know what that going to sound like. Crazy. I don't even know what that going to sound like. What type of song? Like a girl song or what? Cause you know you be singing to him. Yeah, too, yeah. Man. Nah, it, I think it'd be just a real song. Just had him really vocalizing, learning with them keys, me with the bars. Mm. So yeah. what's the process of you actually writing your music? Like you know everybody had to have they had to have their thing, some liquor. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some well, liquor. it used to be for me. You know, what I'm like, all right. So it's two stages now, from okay. the Devo stage to the Dread stage. Okay. I used to have to be in the studio with a hundred people. Hundred people. Like I just wanted my whole hood in the studio with me. You know what okay. I'm saying? I used to look look out the window. Y'all y'all rock y'all. You feel you heard what you I said? You know what I'm saying? Hey, why you hear me? But then it became more mental. Like mm. I need peace in here. I don't need nobody in here with me. Right. I need my liquor. I need my little drugs. I need my little vibes. And I'm working. And I'm standing here 15 hours a day, like like a job, like waking up like a nine to five. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So so how do you do it? Do you find it difficult to like to go out and and, and and party and have a good time and live a normal life considering that you know what i'm saying you you to the plateau you, you're where you're at right now you know what i'm saying as far as growth and people noticing you like is that difficult to deal with that and yeah. take your kids out and family and yeah it get difficult sometimes um the funny thing uh, i'm at the hospital right mm. and um like i say baby on the way congratulations thank you um little girl another little niece you know what i'm saying hold on now baby girl you know what i'm saying <laughs> but uh the crazy thing right we in the hospital and they like um Excuse me, um, isn't isn't he like a big rapper? <laughs> we gonna take y'all name off the grid and put y'all as ghosts, and y'all gotta have a password. I'm like, oh y'all finally recognize me, right? Here. <laughs> you feel me? So how did that feel, man? Just come that up felt great. Bro. Like it felt great. Like you know what I'm saying. My work going noticed. It ain't going unnoticed no more. You know what I'm saying? And they can relate. So I'm like, that's what's up. Respect. So what's next after Pain Three? What you got? What you got? What you got? Cause you independent I'm trying now. To draw. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm I gotta congratulate you for being independent. Thank you. You know that's Thank a big you. thing. That's a big deal. Thank you. Now you can control all the paper. Yes, sir. We don't wrap that little contract up. Okay. It's trying to get it. <laughs> and and I apologize to everybody for the lack of music. It wasn't me. You know, if it was up to me, right. I would have been dropping. Right. But you know, we out that situation. Now I can do what I want when I want. I can drop tomorrow if I want. So, so, and so, I got the music, but you know, we're gonna plan and strategize everything. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. There it is. There it is. There it is. AT Unplugged. Yours truly, Stewie. J Nix Flies got on the radio, man. The rest is shine. First interview, AT Unplugged. Sponsored by Hennessy. You know what I'm talking about? But check it out. I need you to check out this video, man. Maurice Ashley, the first black grand chess master. All right? Never stop, never settle. It's Hennessy. You dig?
He trained his mind among the Black Bear School of Chess. Speed players. You move. Trash talkers. Oh, yeah, you should be looking at the board. Tap, we tap. What you think? You want to come inside my house? How about coming in your house? And through defeat, he learned to dive again and again. You could beat every bear in the forest, but the game is never finished. <laughs>